A very warm welcome, Sergio Gamas, Head of IR of uh, Banco Santander. It's such a pleasure to have you here with us. And let me start, first of all, by saying congratulations to the fantastic achievement in the 2020 Europe Executive Team Survey, where you ranked overall in second with top positions across the different voting categories. Fantastic. Share with us your view on what those IR research awards mean to you and your management. Thank you, Mani, and uh, thanks uh, to Institutional Investor for having me uh, here today. Um, what does the Institutional Investor Awards and, and mean to us? Um, well, I think it's obviously, needless to say, the most prestigious recognition that uh, any IIR team uh, globally uh, can receive uh, nowadays. For me, for my team, obviously for my senior management, being acknowledged by uh, institutional investors, uh, needless to say, you know, it's, like, it's a top priority, but uh, more importantly, it's an honor. Um, because the way we see it is a, it's a very objective, independent, and obviously the meritocratic third party evaluation of how we do our daily job as investor relations. Additionally, I think that uh, the way I, I see this, uh, uh, this, this, this survey is, is a way that allows us allows the market somehow to convey the messages regarding market communication from uh, the companies um, in a very uh, confidential way. So uh, by all means, uh, as I said, it's, it's an honor and uh, it's quite, uh, it ranks quite important uh, to us. Yeah, fantastic. We've obviously all gone through a very tough year, um, the last few months. Um, share with us, because obviously the investor community you know, determined that your IR engagement has been very effective and successful based on the results that you've achieved this year. Share with us some of those uh, measures that you have taken to continue engagement with investors, and what are the changes that you've actually made uh, year on year? Indeed, um, I think the situation we're experiencing uh, during the last year or so is uh, obviously unprecedented and um, companies from all the sector have faced uh, quite a few challenges regarding um, how to communicate from the IA perspective and how to engage and to keep the relationship with the different stakeholders. Face-to-face -face investor engagement is, is difficult to replace, honestly. Um, so at this new Zoom world, let me put it this way, that we are experiencing it's not ideal, but it's the best solution to overcome the challenges that the pandemic uh, puts on the usual daily engagement, the way we uh, we know it. At Santander, obviously, um, I guess any other company, but at Santander, the agendas have kept rolling uh, despite the challenges and, and engagement remains obviously a, a key top priority to us. And the demand for regular interactions and dialogue uh, with uh, different stakeholders has remained very, very uh, strong since the pandemic uh, started, which obviously is, uh, is important. Um, since the traveling restrictions are on the table, what we did was to plan our calendar, kind of as if we were traveling in order to uh, virtually meet investors worldwide, trying to concentrate uh, investors from a specific location in one or two days road shows. So somehow trying to get the, 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 the feeling of uh, some sort of normality, let me put it this way. Um, as any uh, other companies, um, we are now using any uh, channel that, that is available to engage uh, virtually. And of course, we are taking a part of uh, several virtual conferences uh, organized by different brokers in order to be in touch with uh, institutional investors and, and obviously uh, retail shareholders. I think it's worth noting that uh, for the last 12 months, we have had very similar amount in terms of uh, contacts in this virtual world versus what we had uh, in the old normal, let me put it this way. Just to give you some numbers, the, uh, since uh, March uh, last year, we have had like around 1,200 virtual meetings with uh, institutional investors, um, which gives you the idea that, as I said, you know, uh, we continue very proactively engaging with uh, institutional investors, sales uh, analysts, rating agencies, retail uh, shareholders, et cetera. Yeah, very good. You've just mentioned the different platforms that you're also using to engage with investors. We've all gone through a very rapid adoption of technology over the last few months. IR digitization has always been actually a topic before the pandemic even. Um, share with us a little bit about your experience, how you have incorporated IR digitization. I know that you've run an AGM with using blockchain technology, so, you know, front runners there. Share with us a little bit about your tools and, and the methods that you're using. Let, let me um, highlight uh, three different fronts. One of them um, in, in, in that we have improved uh, the digitalization. Uh, one of them is obviously the AGM. 
um, also regarding road shows and, and general communication. So um, with regards to the uh, annual shareholder meeting, we had uh, 12 months ago, uh, our, our first fully digital uh, uh, shareholder meeting. Um, so what we did is to make sure that uh, any shareholder, uh, retail, institutional, could exercise their uh, voting rights um, via the new website or, or, or the app, um, which was you know, quite, quite uh, remarkable. Um, and obviously, the number of uh, shareholders that attended virtually the AGM uh, back a year ago um, was more than double. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that's quite important. Now, the, the upcoming uh, AGM that is going to take place in two, three weeks is going to be uh, a hybrid, uh, a hybrid um, uh, AGM. Um, as you know, there are no uh, still some restrictions, uh, but not that many. Uh, that, so that will allow us to, to, to have this uh, this model. And as you said, uh, we were also the first European financial entity to use blockchain technology in the institutional voting process. So AGM is is one of the fronts. The second one uh, is uh, road shows. Briefly uh, mention uh, what we are doing. Uh, you know, we have been doing for the last uh, twelve months. Since the pandemic started, we have been very active, hosting similar number of virtual meetings than before March 2020. And this uh, virtual world allows the teams to be uh, even much more time efficient while having a global uh, outreach. And the third one is uh, with regards to communication. We communicate with different through different channels that are available, websites, apps, and social media, encouraging, obviously, uh, interactive and promoting, uh, encouraging interactivity and promoting and obviously uh, transparency. Um, we are always open to use any additional new tool and technology that can make our job uh, much more efficient. Uh, for instance, we are currently analyzing the role of artificial intelligence in the IR landscape, mm -hmm. but that's maybe uh, another topic to be, to be discussed. Yeah, very exciting. And we obviously can't um, talk about investor relations without talking about ESG. It's something that is uh, of growing importance and has also grown in terms of momentum during the pandemic. Share with us your ESG journey. Where are you at uh, with regards to alignment with investors and what do you do in terms of specific ESG investor engagement? Yeah, e ESG is not, a, it's not a, just a fashion. ESG is here to stay. Is mm -hmm. is the way... Uh, is the way we need to uh, behave with our customers, with our different stakeholders. Um, and at some time, we take a more comprehensive view on, on ESG and, and we frame it as a responsible banking, um, which is obviously this responsible banking um, is embedded within our strategy. Um, the responsible banking, sustainability and culture, uh, culture committee helps the group board of directors to oversee uh, the responsible banking strategy which obviously includes among other things, uh, climate change. Um, in Santander, uh, we believe that establishing a continuous and recurrent uh, ESG engagement with investors is crucial. Um, that has been in the past, so it's not just uh, something that we uh, are starting to experience for the last uh, 12 months. Um, but with that in mind, we organize dedicated roadshows and take part in the main uh, ESG uh, at conferences. Um, for that reason, we kept uh, working on delivering the best ESG data reporting. We are conscious that we are still, we still have a lot of work to, to do in order to improve the disclosure of our impact on environmental issues and missions like the uh, TFD, uh, TCFD. Um, and that is, this is one of the focus uh, of both the investor relations and also the responsible banking team um, that we have in uh, at Santander. Um, our activity and investments contribute to several uh, UN United Nations uh, Sustainable Development uh, Goals and support the Paris Agreement uh, aims to fight um, climate change. But just to give you uh, some numbers, back in 2019, uh, we disclosed 11 public commitments, which reflect our ambitions for the responsible banking agenda. And last year, in 2020, we made significant progress achieving carbon neutral and fulfilling four of our 2021 commitments one year ahead of plan. Um, obviously, we have recently updated our climate strategy committee, and we announced uh, this uh, a couple of weeks ago by aligning our uh, power generation portfolio with the Paris Agreement by 2030, stop providing uh, financial services to power generation customers with a revenue dependency on coal over more than 10% in 2030, reduce the worldwide exposure to coal mining production to zero, by 2030, and ambition to be um, net zero carbon emission by uh, 2050. So a lot of you know, on, on the table, 
um, more importantly, a clear commitment, a clear strategy um, to be best in class. Mm, yes, yeah, very interesting. We've recently conducted a poll with investors and, and corporates to understand what the market sentiment with regard to activism is. The investors on one hand actually believe that there will be a, an increase in activist approaches. Um, on the other hand, corporates are not really ready. More than half actually don't have a strategy in plan um, to mitigate that potential risk. Or is it an opportunity? What are your views on that? Um... I think that, that, that there are two uh, best lines of defense with regards to activism that any company uh, should have. One is, and, and to me, look, it's the best plan. Uh, the, the first one is any company need to create shareholders. Right? Um, that, that's the best policy to gain the confidence and the respect of uh, the, the investor base. The second one uh, is, uh, is also a necessary condition. The way we see it is, is that uh, um, it's a continuous engagement with a different uh, shareholder base. Um, for that reason, among others, among others, we always have been very much proactive um, on, on this approach with our stakeholders, basing our communication on full transparency and disclosure. So again, the best policy, the best plan is shareholders value plus a continued engagement with different stakeholders based on disclosure, transparency, and make sure that uh, um, you know, corporates or, or are not, uh, don't live in ivory towers, but you know, they are focused on what market perceives, um, you know, what are the concerns, the positives, the doubts, etc. which is what uh, honestly and modestly we, we are trying to do. Mm, yeah, very good. Um, you've obviously been on the sell side before, um, Sergio. Um, IR is subject to various changes, external changes. MIFID has been in 2018 making waves around the IR function and what the provisions are. We have uh, different regulatory changes coming from Europe, but also passive investors, ESG, IR digitization. These are all things that impact investor relations. Um, what are your views in terms of the future? Where do the trends are and where are the potential risks as well in terms of the um, you know, strategic role of IR? Obviously, the, the, the whole, uh, all the sectors uh, change uh, very rapidly, and obviously the IR role and, and, and change is, is changing and is subject to change uh, to changes as, as well. No? Um, two main aspects, if I may, Amani. The, the first one is um, on the way we interact as, as companies with, with investors. And admittedly, uh, you know, maybe at the beginning we were reluctant to use uh, technology uh, for meetings, but more than you know, hosting more than 1,000 virtual meetings for the last 12 months uh, with investors. I can say that uh, this new uh, way of doing IR is here to stay. Um, so it's not uh, something that is, is going to uh, go away. Um, obviously, this open you know, the possibility of what we uh, say internally is a, a interaction multiplier. We don't know how many of these recent practices we will integrate, uh, but I'm pretty sure that, that the future will hold a mix of both worlds, the, 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 the current one plus the physical one. So it's what we call a bit of a hybrid model, um, which is exactly what the way we see it no? uh, for, for many reasons. So the way we communicate with the market, with different stakeholders, is obviously subject to a big change going forward. On another note, I think what as a consequence of also of MIFID too, uh, we have definitely seen a big increase in direct corporate access. Mm -hmm. Investors knocking on our door, wanting to have an open dialogue without you know, um, uh, intermediation. And that's why uh, we have replicated the model. And, and for the last uh, few years, as you know, we have a person fully dedicated to corporate access activities within the team. Uh, obviously, uh, this uh, helped us to provide a better service to investors and means that we are no longer 100% uh, dependent on third parties sponsor uh, corporate access. So again, the way we interact um, in terms of using all these technologies, but also a much more um, direct contact with uh, our different stakeholders versus in the past. Yeah, very good. And obviously, based on your experience, what are your absolute must-haves? We obviously see in the survey that you have uh, rank very highly across all the different IR deliverables and activities. Uh, how do you achieve that? And what are your absolute, you know, must have tools to get to that point? I think that uh, 
you know, after being for more than 20, 25 years doing, you know, uh, being somehow in the, in the market as a sales and analyst investor relation, I think that uh, to keep the uh, investors trust uh, should be at the very base of every investor relation team. And you only get that uh, by having a, you know, fluent, constant, transparent communication. Um, so to me, this is, this is the first requirement. That will be my, uh, and this is what I always say to uh, to the new joiners. Of the team. Um, it's the most important asset that an investor relation is going to have. Um, other main features I uh, would be uh, investor proximity. Strive to strive to be very close to the market, reporting on how we are carrying out our strategy. Make sure that my board of directors, my senior management, is well aware about what the market things you know things that we are doing rightly, we are doing wrongly and how that could affect uh, in terms of the market perception, uh, and, you know, to, specifically to, to Santander, and obviously because that might have knock-on impacts and in terms of shareholder value. So we like to, uh, we like sharing the company's good news with investment communities, but uh, we are even closer to the market where the message is not that bright. You know? It mm -hmm. uh, happens as well. Uh, so on the positive side and on the negative side, mm -hmm. As I said, the most important asset that we have in our daily uh, job is, uh, is investor trust. And, and the way to get that and to maintain this trust is, as I said, constant, fluent, and transparent communication. Yeah, very good. Thank you for sharing those insights. We're now switching gear, Sergio, and I hope you play along. We have a quick question round for you. The first one is, name, please, a historic figure that you would like to meet, and what would you ask them? <laughs> Um, well, I, I love music, so a um, historic person to me uh, it would be uh, Mozart. Okay. So, uh, of all the music that uh, I mean, one of the questions that I will ask him is uh, of all the music that you have composed, um, which piece do, do you consider would be the greatest? Yeah. Um, and, and, and why? No? Um, but, uh, very good. Maybe the second question now that I have is is now redundant. But who is your favorite singer, band, or music? Well, it's not redundant because, uh, as I said, I, I love music, but I love uh, many types of music, not just uh, classic music. I'm uh, a big fan of uh, electronic dance music as well. Uh -huh. Uh, even I, I do some DJing uh, every now and then, um, <laughs> private parties. Um, not not with the COVID. That was uh, in the old in the old days. Um, so yeah, it's uh, electronic dance music. I like it a lot. As well. Fantastic. And do you have a favorite quote from a movie that you use regularly? Well, there are there are many quotes. Um, uh, one that I like. Uh, and I guess it's, it's very well known uh, because the movie is, is quite famous and it was very much awarded that uh, the Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. Um, so I think the gap you said, uh, the only thing standing between you and your goal is the story you keep telling yourself as opposed to, as of to why you can't achieve it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, a, you know, don't have, don't have dreams, just have goals. Right? Yeah. and execute the roadmap to get there. Yeah, fantastic. And um, how do you relax, Sergio? What, what do you do to, to relax? Um, I, I like to do a lot of sports, to be honest. Uh, I try to do uh, you know, some kind of a sport uh, almost on a daily basis. Uh, um, uh, even when I was traveling back in the old days, uh, you know, I always took my running shoes, etc., cetera, and, um, and try to make the most of, of, of my one or two hours that we had uh, in between road shows. But so again, I think that, that, that to me, it's, it's just do some kind of sport, swimming, running, go to the gym, um, is the way I relax. Yeah, fantastic. And I'm sure your location as well does provide those kind of options too, doesn't it? Um, for 2021, what are your personal objectives or resolutions? Well, um, to, to me, will be try to continue to try to find that once things return to normality, it's not just for 2021, but um, obviously for for an IR you know, colleagues, like in my case, that we have been uh, traveling so much you know, for I don't know how many years, taking 50, 60, 100 uh, flights per year. I think 
what this current experience is learn is teaching us is that uh, is, is the need to find the right balance between you know professional and personal lives. I mean, we have spent a lot of nights uh, you know, out of home uh, with our family. So that that's that's to me uh, that will be you know the, 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 to find the right balance will be the, the challenge once we uh, go from no traveling to my half a year on a plane uh, previously. Mm -hmm. So uh, how to get there? Um, obviously, it's, uh, it's going to be it's going to be tricky. But I'll find it. Yes. Well, when you find the formula, please share it with us. <laughs> I think we are all struggling with that. Well, Sergio Gavis, thank you very much for your time today. Um, Global Head uh, of Investor Relations and Shareholder Services at Banco Santander. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for your insights, and uh, I hope we get to meet each other uh, in person this year in Spain. Yeah, I hope so as well. Thank you, Mari. Thanks to the Institutional Investor.